Welcome to the channel. I'm the Scottish Astrologer and in this video I want to talk to you all about what is known as the Great Year and in particular I want to talk to you about the Age of Aquarius section of the Great Year. Now the Great Year runs similar to our annual year, the difference being the Great Year lasts roughly 25,900 annual years. And the Great Year uh, is dictated via the procession of the equinoxes. And one full procession, a full 360 degrees procession of the equinoxes through all 12 zodiac signs gives you one complete Great Year, which again runs roughly 25,900 years. And just like our annual year consists of 12 sections, 12 months, 12 equal sections, we call months, the great year consists of 12 sections also, but we call them ages instead of months, and they're represented by each of the 12 zodiac signs. You have the age of Aries, the age of Pisces, age of Aquarius, etc, etc, all the way through the zodiac. And each age, which runs just like our annual year months, okay, each age runs approximately 2,000 years for every age. Now, some zodiac signs will last more than the 2,000 years, some will last a little less than the 2,000 years. And this is because the zodiac signs are, of course, all different sizes, okay? And so it's, it's obvious that for smaller zodiac signs, the sun will take less time to go through that complete sign, okay? And so... For others, it'll take a little bit longer than the average 2,000 years, maybe 2,100 years. It basically works the same as the annual months, where some of our annual months contain 31 days, some have 30, some have 29. They're all different lengths, okay? Some are the same length, but there is a different length for each month. And that's the exact same when it comes to the great year ages, different in size, different in length, slightly. And just like we have seasons, okay, four seasons within every annual year, the great year obviously also consists of these seasons. And the seasons in our annual year are actually caused by a slight wobble, okay, at the Earth's axis. And that slight wobble causes our seasons, causes the sun to get a bit, the Earth, sorry, to get a bit closer and a bit further away because of this wobble at the axis, okay, a bit closer, a bit further away from the sun, making it a hotter part of the year and a colder part, summer, winter. And again, just like the annual year, the great year works the same, has seasons just the same as it has a wobble at the axis, but it's a much greater wobble, a much larger wobble that again takes roughly 26,000 years to complete that full wobble, whereas it takes only 12 months in our annual year for the Earth to complete that smaller wobble to give the seasons. Now, the main difference between our annual year and the great year is that the, the annual, our annual year runs through the zodiac in a particular order from Aries to Taurus, from Taurus to Gemini in the clockwork natural order. But when it comes to the great year, again dictated via the procession of the equinoxes. This actually runs backwards, okay, so from Pisces to Aquarius, from Aquarius to Capricorn, from Capricorn to Sagittarius. See, so it runs in reverse, 
it doesn't go clockwise, it goes anti-clockwise throughout the, for the precession of the equinoxes to dictate the great year runs in reverse through the zodiac. And it's the precession of the equinoxes is just as seen by if you go to the spring equinox, okay, whatever zodiac sign, degree of zodiac sign is rising with the sun on the spring equinox is the current position we are in in the great year. Currently, we are just ended Pisces and are just going into the first degree of Aquarius this year, December 21st, 2020. So that's what the age of Aquarius is all about. That's what people are talking about, us entering the age of Aquarius. It's because of the procession of the equinoxes is currently now entered Aquarius. And now... This procession at last it moves, sorry, about one degree of a zodiac sign. It'll shift one degree every 72 years, roughly. So for a great year, one day would be represented every 72 years. That works out to be one day within a great year. And so knowing which zodiac signs represent which particular seasons in the annual year, of course, works the same in the great year for telling you what the current season is we are in of the great year. And just like we have a hot part of the year and a cold part of the year, summer and winter in our annual year, this great year also contains these two factors. But instead of running six months apart from each other, roughly, these great winter and great summer run roughly 12,000 years, 12 and a half, 13,000 years apart from each other. And the great winter is will be known as what we call an ice age, okay? And the great summer is like a tropical age, where it's extremely hot. Global temperatures are very, very hot in the great summer period and global temperatures go in reverse very very cold in the great winter ice age period and now as the three zodiac signs which represent the winter season are of course Pisces, Aquarius and Capricorn we are now in the middle sign of the great winter just entered in the middle sign of the great winter which is, of course, Aquarius. And there is, of course, proof to this great winter, great summer, what I'm talking about. If you look at any of the charts that go back in time showing average global temperatures, and you look back roughly 11 and a half, 12,000 years in the past from now, you will see the total reverse in global temperatures where they were much, much hotter than they are today. And you can see that from that point, 12,000, roughly 11, 12,000 years ago, there's just been a gradual decrease in global temperatures until we get to this current point. So that took us from a much hotter period, a great summer period, all the way down to now into the great winter period. And as you can see with these charts, clearly there's a decrease, a gradual decrease over time in global average temperatures. And so the main thing nobody talks about regarding entering the age of Aquarius is that we are also entering the midpoint of what is known as the Great Winter. And so we are thus entering into an ice age. Now, don't be freaked out. No, I'm not saying that as we've just entered Aquarius, all of a sudden like the click of a finger, there's going to be ice sheets everywhere. I'm not saying that whatsoever. It's a total gradual process. And to me, it's logical that the ice sheets will begin to form roughly nearing the end of Aquarius, okay? So roughly one and a half, two thousand years from this point, nearing the end of Aquarius, the beginning of Capricorn. That, in my opinion, is when the logical time for when the ice sheets will start to form. So we don't need to worry about seeing the ice sheets, seeing the ice age, it's gradual. 
but we are going to experience the shifting, if you like, in climate towards taking us into this ice age. So we will start to experience all these changes. Again, we're in a grand solar minimum right now, so the changes will be related to the solar minimum and the effects that has on earth and climate and temperature, weather, everything else. But again, grand solar minimum, a separate cycle from this. Grand solar minimum is basically just puts temperatures up and down and up and down and up and down. As you can see with this chart over time, it's like 188 year cycle roughly. It ups and down, solar minimums, maximums, minimums, maximums. But as you can see with the chart, regardless of the ups and downs of temperature over time, there is a gradual decrease in temperature. Again, as you can see, regardless of the ups and downs, it's a downward gradual decrease over time, taking us into the colder points, great winter. And to be honest with you, I believe global average temperatures would be even colder right now had it not been for the Industrial Revolution and all the excess man-made heat that we have put out there, okay? That has had an effect in my opinion, to keep temperatures slightly above what they would actually be right now, seeing we're in the great winter period. But nature will correct itself. Trust nature. Trust nature will correct herself. But again, I believe we have had a severe effect, a massive effect. So yeah, the main thing people neglect to mention when talking about entering the age of Aquarius, is what period of the great year the age of Aquarius actually lies in, okay? Being the great winter. Everyone just talks about the consciousness upgrade or the change in consciousness, if you like, for humanity and all the changes humanity will see personally as a result, but they don't talk about the changes the Earth will see, okay, in this period. And I think that's a very important thing that needs to be talked about, needs to be discussed. And everyone will say, what about global warming? How are we having global warming? And I'll say, global warming was true, yeah, because, again, we have global minimums eh, and maximums, not global. We have solar minimums and solar maximums, okay? So... We've just came out of what is known as the modern solar maximum, okay, when temperatures were a bit hotter than average. And so again, as we've just came out of a solar maximum, we've now entered a solar minimum 2020, so we'll see that whole global warming caper shift away because they can't, they can't hide cold temperatures anymore. Soon enough. And of course, combined with the solar maximum we were just then also like i mentioned ever since the industrial revolution humanity has greatly contributed to adding heat to global temperatures so that combined with the solar maximum we were in obviously was what they were able to sell global warming to people with but that's totally ended now that's finished when a grand solar minimum and the age of Aquarius, so double whammy for temperature drop, so the whole global warming thing is going to go away very soon, you watch. Now, every age, just like every month in the annual year, has a complete different feel, a complete different energy to it, and so expecting the age of Aquarius, complete change from the age of Pisces, what we've just lived through, okay, just experienced. We're now moving in, come December 21st, the end of this year, 2020. That's the point, age of Aquarius, the whole energy will change. You're already feeling the sort of transition of it changing, okay? But again, come that date, like a button, a full shift in the energies, a full change. And that goes with consciousness, human consciousness, collective consciousness as a whole gets an upgrade, an awakening, if you like, is what it's been termed as. 
but I feel it's better termed as a consciousness upgrade. So what can we expect in the age of Aquarius? What physical changes can we expect? And as Aquarius is of the air element, moving into air, everything will become lighter and faster. And we will begin to see everything manifest in relation to air, in a sense. In the way I just explained, faster, lighter, contactless. So some of the things that will be prominent in the age of Aquarius is things like wind power, wireless, okay? Everything being in what's known as the cloud, okay? Data. Everything becoming less physical, less material, and more air, more ethereal, more digital. And that goes especially cash, okay? They want to move cashless, so expect everything cashless, totally digital, paperless, everything digital. We're used to getting letters in the mail, that'll all end gradually. It'll all be digital. Everything that can be digital or non-physical or material will be. We're also going to see transportation, as in cars, okay, motor vehicles, move from being earthbound, stuck to the ground, to eventually being in the air, flying cars. And we will also see proper space travel take off in the age of Aquarius, like nothing we've ever seen before. We already are beginning to see that now. We can also eventually expect to master sound frequency totally in this age. You will even notice things of the Piscean age such as smoking, okay, like smoking cigarettes for instance is now moving on to vaping. So you see the change is, affects basically absolutely everything. Again, even using cigarette as an example, move into a machine, a vape. Again, as I mentioned, move into contactless everything, everything that can be contactless will be. And this includes computers, okay, becoming 100% voice controlled, the screen becoming non-physical in the sense of becoming a hologram, so you won't touch the computer, there won't be a physical screen, that will be totally voice controlled and, again, holographic. Then we're already seeing the transition towards this type of computing through devices such as Alexa, for instance. That's just baby steps towards the ultimate goal of computer being hologram and totally voice controlled. And beyond that, you've got people like Elon Musk want, wanting to bring the computer inside the body, into the brain. Don't know how, <laughs> I don't agree with that whatsoever. I think that's crazy, but hey ho, we're here. People are actually trying to do this stuff, and it's all related to the technological advancements of the air element age of Aquarius. Again, the contact list will be chips eventually. People will, and already have, will use chips uh, for they're banking and to open doors and again, so they don't need to touch everything. Any Everything becomes less about physical contact and more about contactless through the air, again. Also agriculture will move into methods like aeroponics where the earth is removed and it's all done through air. Internet from space through Starlink, etc., which we're already seeing happening everything becoming lighter or less dense or again becoming totally digital. The Aquarian age will also eventually become an age of cooperation and sharing rather than greed and individualism. Again, eventually, it's a process. Will also be an age of reuse, recycle rather than mass waste. And again, everything becoming lighter or less dense, faster, Again, also faster digital communications through 5G, 6G, etc. Again, all of this is related to the air element quality 
of Aquarius. And again, the other quality of people working together, you know, projects rather than individualism. And of course, the technological advancement aspect of Aquarius in general. Also, Aquarius is all about all knowledge being revealed, okay? That's what the man pouring out the pitcher of water, the water representing truth and knowledge and secrets that were before hidden in the pitcher now being poured out of the pitcher, revealed. The truth being revealed. So again, in this age, we will gain the answers to all the questions that have stumped man. So yeah, very... Very exciting times, the times we live, this transitionary period from Pisces to Aquarius and all that we're going to see, especially for us, seeing the old age before and coming into the, something completely new, that's special in itself, living at that point in time. So to me, it's very interesting that all these qualities come hand in hand with moving into an ice age. Very interesting. And I think it was totally needed. Like, we need all these kinds of advancements. Not all of them, but a lot of them are truly handy for when you are moving into an ice age. So, yeah, again, very exciting times we are currently living in, experiencing. And I just wanted to make this video primarily to show people what most people don't actually talk about when they talk about the age of Aquarius, and that's the Ice Age aspect of it, the Great Winter aspect of it, because of course he, the sign of Aquarius lands slap bang in the middle of the winter period of the annual year and of course the Great Year. And so it's something everyone should expect in that time, but something that very few people are aware of or actually talk about. When they talk about the age of Aquarius, it's generally just all the technological advancements and everything else I just talked about, but leaving out the whole moving in to the great winter and moving into an ice age, okay? That's the serious part that nobody talks about. Okay, folks, I think I went on enough for this video. A huge thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already, and don't forget to hit the bell at the right-hand side of the subscribe button. Till next time, take care.